What's up guys and welcome back. We have an awesome Switch 2 update video today as we analyze new info regarding Samsung's potential partnership with Nintendo including what type of customized fast storage they will be working with Nintendo to provide and we will also be discussing a rather interesting rumor about Switch 2 specs and its chip type later in the video. So if you enjoy this content and would like to support it, please hit the like button and subscribe since as you likely assume the Switch 2 is going to be one of the main topics going forward being Nintendo's next generation platform and of course it will be the premier place that will be playing all the new games including Metroid Prime 4 and everything else first party after the Switch 1 has been laid to rest. So again, thank you very much for your support. Now ever since the Nintendo Switch was released back in 2017, many people including myself have not been too happy with a few things in regards to storage and how it was put to use in the console. The Switch has the ability to accept very large micro SD cards all the way up to 2 terabytes in some cases depending on the type that you purchase but the actual hardware itself only has 32 gigabytes of system storage which was the same as the Wii U had all the way back in 2012. Now, when you combine this with the fact that the type of Switch ROM cartridges needed to store games on them have been very limited in size as well, with the biggest carts coming in at 32GB, the Nintendo Switch has ended up suffering from a lot of games being shipped on carts with partial data from the game installed on the cartridge due to how expensive these cartridges have cost to third-party developers to use, which in turn made it so the majority of new games, especially those with larger worlds and perhaps even newer ports like Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, a lot of these games require a micro SD card to play them on the Switch and the cart would only basically have a small amount of data on it for things such as game IDs for rights and ownership but the rest of the game would then need to be downloaded to a micro SD card. Now this has caused concern by various people over the years about game preservation since if these games aren't really fully there physically and you need to download most of the game digitally, what happens to these games when and if these servers that you downloaded sometimes half the game from are gone. This is something that has continued to be a concern over time since we have seen games end up being removed from availability, especially digital games, and it's something Nintendo still needs to address moving forward, especially as we move into the Switch 2 generation very soon since game sizes are only going to be getting bigger, not smaller. So that moves us to what appears to be a potential solution to Nintendo's problems with storage and expandable storage with the Switch 2 and that is a newly announced partnership with Samsung. It was recently revealed that Samsung is partnering with a secret customer whom they won't name in Samsung's newly announced line of SD Express micro SD cards. These cards will launch in later 2024 with a 256 gigabyte card and then will be followed up by a one terabyte option, which each having up to 800 megabytes per second transfer speeds. But the key quote that Samsung said in their press release was that this is a successful collaboration with a customer to create a custom product. So this basically wasn't Samsung's idea themselves. Someone, and there's reason to believe that this was Nintendo, went to Samsung to try to come up with a portable expandable storage solution for micro SD cards that had much faster read speeds than the standard micro SD cards of today. There would be many reasons for Nintendo to do this as well, namely heat and power consumption. And if Nintendo went with an M.2 SSD for Switch 2, for example, it would be extremely fast, of course, but those are well known for not only generating a lot of heat, but also more power consumption as well. And for a portable console, every single watt that is used counts a lot and could theoretically take some of that much needed power use away for clock speeds to remain higher. So it makes sense that Nintendo would not go for something that is based on an M.2 SSD. But dating back for a while now, we've been discussing the possibility of Nintendo using Samsung's UFS, Universal Flash Storage, technology for Switch 2's internal storage, which is what smartphones use today due to its very fast read speeds while consuming very low power. Now back when the PS5 was released, the SSD was heavily hyped up as being a big game changer in terms of how games could render worlds on the fly and make for less be needed to be preloaded in the background while a game was running so it could focus on things like frame rate and texture detail and just load the needed assets so fast that you wouldn't notice during gameplay. However, in 2020 before, you really haven't seen much of this being used at all in games with the only game that is said to require an SSD for the best experience being Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart on the PS5. And while yes, the fast SSD of the PS5 does help a lot with making smooth warping transitions in that game, 
it's not actually required and can still be played just fine with a 500 megabytes per second SATA SSD, which is your standard SSD, with some hitches for sure, but it's not really that much of a difference. So if the Switch 2 has read speeds of say 800 megabytes per second, that would mean you'd have games that load data around 8 to 12 times faster than the Switch 1. Since Nintendo recommends microSD cards for the Switch 1 to have 60 megabytes per second up to about 100 megabytes per second to work well for the Switch 1 and transferring and loading data for games. So having even 800 megabytes per second for Switch 2 would be a massive upgrade from Switch 1 and would be more than enough speed to load games far, far faster. Now in the PC world for the most part, a lot of games see around a two to five second faster loading time when you're using an M.2 SSD versus a 500 megabyte SATA SSD. So in terms of fast travel and triple-a third-party game on switch 2 you might be seeing the ps5 version be faster loading than the switch 2 true but not by a lot like how you would see with switch 1 so say if a ps5 game takes about five seconds or so to fast travel then the switch 2 port could probably theoretically be about eight to ten seconds is my guess which is still very fast so all in all, I think if Nintendo and Samsung are working together to get Switch 2 expandable and fast storage at low power consumption, this would be an excellent choice with the Express microSD cards, and it could really be a breakthrough for the consumer overall, not just for Switch 2, but for fast reading speed microSD cards in general for everyone. So suffice to say, this would be a very exciting upgrade for Switch 2. Now, next up, we will discuss this rumor on Switch 2 specs and its chip type. So all the way back in 2021, around three years ago, there was a Tegra SoC named the T239 that NVIDIA skipped in production and the well-known NVIDIA GPU leaker by the name of Kepler, now if I'm saying his name wrong, I apologize, but that's how it sounds to me. They said that this chip would be the chip that Nintendo would use for the Switch 2 with modifications. Now, personally, other than that post about the T239 chip almost three years ago, there really hasn't been much evidence out there that Nintendo truly is using that chip for Switch 2. It's been a lot of people making assumptions and in good faith pretty much taking Kepler's word for it. But the more years go by, the more questionable it is that Nintendo would actually use that chip in the quote unquote as is, meaning exactly as it was found back in 2021, without some pretty big customizations to it. Which is sites like Digital Foundry have also agreed with recently that this chip would need to be heavily customized. And if Switch 2 is coming in 2025, that would make this T239 chip already four years old by the time the Switch 2 releases, which would make it twice as old as the Tegra S1 was in 2017 for the Switch 1, since that chip came out in 2015, making it two years old when the Switch 1 came out. So taking all this into consideration, I think we got a fair amount of unanswered questions about Switch 2's SoC at this point, and we probably won't know the full story until Nintendo reveals Switch 2 likely later this year. But that hasn't stopped people from rumoring, or at least trying to rumor, what the Switch 2 SoC will be, and just a few days ago, we had Moore's Law is Dead, the YouTube channel, do this big rumor video on Switch 2's SoC and various details that he claims he's heard, and I'll leave that in the description, of course, for you to see, but I wanted to put a disclaimer out there on this as well, is that the main reason why I'm covering this rumor here in this video is because it got traction from other bigger channels, so I felt it was necessary to cover it and put my input on it, because a lot of the time, people just like to jump on rumor stories as fast as they can and be the first in line to do so, but after a few days pass and after looking into a lot of these Switch 2 rumors, they are a lot of the time the quote unquote flavor of the day kind of rumors, and the track record for a lot of these people that rumor stuff is extremely suspect. And this is is exactly the case with this Moore's Law is Dead channel, and after looking into their track record of their rumors for the last five years or so, the info they share is a lot of stuff that sounds good at the time, but ends up being a lot of fake information later. And granted, some of the stuff they posted has been correct, but they also never really cover anything Nintendo related. So personally, I'm putting a lot of doubt into if what they posted about Switch 2 is correct, and more so just a repeating a lot of the same stuff we've already heard about the Switch 2's SoC, especially if it's based on the T239 chip. And to go along with that, the GPU leaker himself, Kepler, called out Moore's Laws dead on Twitter as basically posting info that wasn't correct or not knowing what they were talking about in terms of tech. But quite frankly, I have to agree from what was shared, it did sound like MLID didn't grasp some of the flaws in the information he himself was sharing 
because if I was the one that got that info, for example, I'd personally be questioning more so if that was really true. Not saying that it couldn't be true, it could be actually, but I'd really be doubting it until I saw it personally revealed myself, but hey, that's just me. So the main reason is due to the Switch 2 SoC being rumored from that information to be using the T239 chip, which is fine, but at eight nanometers with its full 1536 CUDA cores intact. Now, this is the key reason why I'm making this video, since simply put, the NVIDIA eight nanometer T239 SoC was not designed for any portable devices. It wasn't meant to be used for portable devices. It simply generates way too much power consumption due to the chip being too big with that many CUDA cores intact. So realistically, this is why many, including Digital Foundry, like we said, and others have assumed that Samsung would die shrink the GPU IP of the T239 to something more in line for a portable device like the Switch 2 to a four nanometer process, for example, which would then allow them to actually use the 1500 CUDA cores that it has at clock speeds that make sense. I know this part might be more difficult to understand for people, but basically if Nintendo were to use the eight nanometer 1500 CUDA core T239 chip in its original form factor, in order for it to work for Switch 2, they need to downclock it so low that pretty much those CUDA cores would not be used as they should be. And the chip itself, which is likely not going to be cheap for Nintendo, would make no sense for them to invest that much in if they can't be using what it was actually designed to be used for at eight nanometers. The best example I can try to explain as a potential waste of the use of this SOC would be like if you purchased an RTX 4090 and decide to downclock it from its 2.2 gigahertz stock speeds all the way down to something like 900 megahertz, which would probably make it run more like an RTX 4070 or so instead of a 4090. And if that were the case, why would you bother buying the RTX 4090 if your purpose was to run it at such a downgraded level, you would basically be wasting your money at that point, which is exactly what this sounds like for any eight nanometer T239 chip with 1500 CUDA cores, since Nintendo really would be paying for something they wouldn't be able to use to its full potential. Since docked performance, while seemingly would of course have more leeway to upclock from portable mode, Nintendo can't make it so drastically different that you'd get essentially a totally different experience on your TV. That's not how the Switch design works, and it would more so invalidate using portable mode versus dock mode as well. Now again, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it seems doubtful they'd stick with the eight nanometer process for that particular chip. And if they did, it would make more sense to actually cut down the CUDA cores to about 1000 and upclock those to get a similar performance to the potentially heavily downclocked 1500 CUDA cores that the rumors suggest. Which is why I always say that people should really proceed with caution with any Switch 2 specs rumors because when you get these kind of inconsistencies, it really throws a wrench into if rumors like this are even believable or not. Sure, yes, it's possible. And I wanna make clear that Nintendo could actually do this for the Switch 2, but the source of the rumor honestly isn't trustworthy and the info shared isn't as believable as you think it is on paper. But that's just my take on it, guys. And if you or anyone else want to believe rumors like this, it's totally okay to do so. I just felt like if I didn't explain why I have my doubts about it and why, then it wouldn't be doing my part. So I hope that makes sense. All right, guys, that's all for this one. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button and tell me your thoughts in the comment section. And I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.